Uh, Commission, first of all, I, I remain a nationalist, first and foremost, I'm an internationalist, and, I, and I'm sure that everyone in this hall is an internationalist. <coughs> and I think that's um, hugely important. The other thing I have to say is I abhor bullying. And what, what we heard in relation to the drones is a, 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 an example of bullying, and bullying can take many pernicious forms, so uh, that's partly uh, why I, I became active in, in, in politics and indeed in, in a staff association to prevent that. I joined the Scottish National Party when I was 16 years of age in Oman, and I have to say that, um, so almost 40 years, bar two or three years in my early 20s where I was more bringing up a family and these things weren't on, on my mind so much, um, so it, it was a big wrench to, to, to leave the party. I, I think it was the right thing to do. I think it's hugely important that we have a broad coalition in support of independence. So that is the Scottish Socialist Party, um, the Green Party, the Scottish National Party, and indeed you have two um, independent MSPs now supporting that. Um, people said it was great, the debate at conference. I actually thought it was an awful debate. I thought it was very good that there was a debate, which is something totally different. But it, I thought it was an awful debate. I thought it became a bit of a, a cheerleading for, for, for certain groups. However, the decision has been reached and we must move on from that. Um, I certainly haven't given up and trying to ensure that uh, an independent Scotland, and there won't be an independent Scotland, uh, has nothing to do with NATO. And I'm going to come on to a few reasons why. I want to, to say that the, the thing that perhaps disappointed me more than anything about the decision that was taken, and it was democratically taken, and, and that has to be respected, was, for me, it was the loss of vision that goes with that, because I wanted something different, I wanted better. I don't think Scottish people are any better than anyone else, but I certainly don't think they're any different than anyone else, and I think we have had a, a rich opportunity to shape a better independent Scotland. Now, we'll all be working at that, and hopefully we'll get there, but... A few, a few bits of nonsense along the way, and there was some nonsense. So we, we, we were told, for instance, that Greece and Canada, independent sovereign nations, had got rid of nuclear weapons. Well, eh, nonsense. No, nuclear weapons were removed from Greece by the US at the time of conflict with Turkey. Canada eh, still hosts the US nuclear fleet. Their weapons were, were obsolete. The German situation is the one that I think is most compelling for people. And if you want to know how NATO works, the German experience there coalition government, a foreign minister coming in and saying, at last the chance to become free of the nuclear menace. Well, the Chicago conference that NATO held in the, the May of this year, not only didn't go along with removing nuclear weapons from um, Germany, but they're going to upgrade the 26 tactical warheads earlier. So, um, I have to say uh, that was a, an example of the mighty Germany can't do it in an independent Scotland, isn't it? I certainly do wish Mr. Shannon well with the negotiations. But of course, the negotiations, if you're negotiating to join a club, the first thing you do is you chat the door of the club and you say, what are the rules? And of course, what I did manage to flush out from Mr. Robertson the day of the debate, and indeed on live radio, was that whilst he had met ambassadors from around Europe, whilst he had visited the Great and Good and lunched with admirals, um, that he had not actually asked NATO this proposal we've got, how do you feel about that? Now, to me, that was and remains deeply flawed. Um, another bit of nonsense that I, I, I hope we can get some consensus on is this um, uh, idea that there was going to be this potential new area of conflict, and this was the Arctic. And it was very important that Scotland, you know, being such a northern state, had to have a, re a very key role in that. Well, I support the notion of the Arctic being a UN protectorate, and the very idea that an independent Scotland would go to war for a dispute between ExxonMobil and Gazprom, I find an obscenity. And that is not what uh, defence is about. The defence that I thought Scotland should have is the defence that Ireland has, Sweden has, Finland has, uh, and uh, perhaps there's been movement to these countries from the, their historic position, but the role of perhaps uh, only deploying troops overseas in a humanitarian capacity. This was a majority, it is a majority government, the academics are away rewriting their own books, it's a majority government that was elected notwithstanding this apparently weight around our neck of the NATO, NATO issue. I can tell you, I've chapped hundreds if not thousands of doors and no one, but no one, and I've racked my brain to recall anyone mentioning NATO. It's not been mentioned. People are interested in practical things. They'll say, my dad was a soldier. 
Will he still get his pension after uh, independence? My lobbies in the RAF regiment, what will happen? These are the practical things these, uh, uh, that people are interested in. Not, not uh, uh, membership of NATO. And NATO, so NATO of course, um, is, for want of a better, is US dominated, I think would be not an unreasonable statement to me. And indeed, the US general, and I'm grateful for my friend and colleague uh, Bill there, who uh, raised the, the, the phrase that the US general said about Snow White and the 27 Dwarfs was how they the, the, Well, of course, um, Snow White and the 28 Dwarfs um, is, is a potential. Trident's got 160 uh, warheads, and these are, quote, assigned to NATO. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that NATO is a major roadblock to uh, removing the obscenity of nuclear weapons from uh, the, uh, the planet, let alone Scotland. People use the term uh, weapons of mass destruction. I'm grateful, and I'm, I wish I could remember who I am grateful to, for saying, call them what they are, weapons of indiscriminate mass civilian slaughter, because that's what they are. They are an obscenity to humanity, and certainly, uh, I want nothing to do with promoting membership of any organisation, a first strike organisation. Um, there's a couple of publications I'd like to draw your attention to very quickly. Um, Try to know where to go. John Ainsley, CND. Um, John visited all the sites where it had been proposed prior to, to uh, Coport. Um, and uh, there is nowhere to go. None of them are at all uh, acceptable now. The nearest one was the place where they held the Olympic yachting event, but that, that uh, had its limitations too. It can go to Britain, it can go to the Eastern Seaboard of the US, uh, because that would offend the non proliferation treaty, not that I suspect anyone would be greatly concerned about that. And they can go to floating facilities because they would no longer pass any uh, even cursory health and safety inspection. So there is nowhere to go. The next one, and a very exciting one, is this one, Disarming Trident. Great publication. There's the timetable. Phase one, end operational deployment of submarines, seven days. Phase two, remove keys and triggers, seven days. Phase three, of a dialect, disable missiles, eight days. And so on. Dismantle nuclear warheads takes four years. What an opportunity and what a lost opportunity I have to say. This was a tremendous negotiating tool. And I, I mean, I'm not being defeatist in this. I don't think all is lost yet. And uh, what is seen as the fallback position of the Scottish National Party. Um, maybe, and it has of course been suggested to me that this is just a, it's, it's, I'm just not clever enough to understand this very subtle ploy that's been played. But um, finishing on the, 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 the triangle tissue, the, the, the difficulty, and then a couple of other ones, sorry, um, please go. Um, the opportunity was there for Scotland and independent Scotland to disarm the United Kingdom. And that, that was a tremendous prize to be won. Um, and a quick look um, on uh, Google. I never like seeing the, the thing there. There are other websites available, uh, other search engines. Um, to see um, what came up when I put uh, NATO news in. First thing that came up was Turkey. Um, and we, we all know that Syria is really just a proxy war. Um, Afghanistan, um, and that's a place where the US military spend billions on air conditioning for the troops. But basic sanitation doesn't exist for the people. And goodness knows what legacy is going to be left to the women of Afghanistan when we do withdraw. The next one was Georgia. But it was described as um, um, the NATO members were concerned about how Georgia was dealing with their neighbours. Well, we know the reckless situation that um, NATO's expansion has caused there. And I, one that fascinated me, I have to say I didn't have time to look further into it, but the headline was, Australia, very influential, says an envoy. Um, and then, we must, quote, improve partnership with South Korea. I'm not sure why, but I think we can both guess. We can all guess. Um, so, uh, you know, this idea that what started off as a, a post-war um, um, organisation, and uh, they got this wrong, but I saw you see the quote, quote in 1949 has been, keeping the Russians out, the Germans down, and the Americans in. Well, it seems to have summed it up. But of course, there's been momentous events since then about the fall of the Berlin Wall, and they are now seeking a new role, and that new role is an expansionist role, and that's a danger to not just our good selves, but the, the planet. 
Now, the Soviet threat we know now was greatly exaggerated, and we can speculate why that may be. It's uh, the US defense industries do need to keep ticking over the whole part of politics that applies there. There was another element to that, and that was keeping the left out of Europe. Operation Gladio, which I, I read about today, that was a, an operation with the CIA involving violence in Italy, the coup in Greece, an attempt to destabilize democracy in Belgium, and um, earlier on, an interference with the Algerian uh, um, negotiations at the time of their independence. So, uh, I can't support a, a NATO policy uh, or membership of, of NATO. Uh, I can't uh, go along with uh, a philosophy that saw Blair involved in war crimes, and there is a parliamentary motion which I have signed trying to indict him. And of course, more recently, Gaza, the obscenity that is Gaza, and uh, um, I'm sure we're all shocked by that. I'll quickly make a, a mention of what Amjad talked about there, and, and I came across a, a report by US academics, and I say that because I, I think it's very significant that uh, some of the language is very loaded and judgmental, but at least they, there's a, a <coughs> honesty about that wonderful, the awful phrase, man-made metallic devil. And, and just to quote from the executive summary, in the United States, the dominant narrative about the use of drones in Pakistan was of a surgically precise and effective tool that makes the U.S. safer by enabling, quote, targeting killing of terrorists with minimal downsides or collateral impacts. Now, by that, they probably mean that between 2,562 or 3,325 people killed in Pakistan, including 176 children. And they commend an organization, the Bureau of, Bureau of Investigative Journalism, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I commend them too for their work on that. That's a, 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 an interesting thing that I'll leave with you. Mm -hmm. but very quickly, turning to independence then, please, and please tell me to, 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 to shut up. Uh, well, um, we're up against it here. We're up against the British state, and the British state's a very nasty, nasty organisation. They were very nasty 12 miles from Scotland in the north of Ireland. They've been nasty around the globe. And there's no reason to uh, suspect that they won't be um, nasty with the independence movement. The British state has always looked after its own, and its own are the generals, the bankers, the arms dealers, the wealthy, the powerful countries, and the private schools. And uh, clearly opposed to change. And given the choice of public schools and public sector, I think you know ultimately uh, where the British state will come down. On. There are huge equalities across uh, the United Kingdom. There are huge inequalities, I, I should say, huge inequalities in Scotland. There are huge inequalities in the town island and in Inverness, where a mile apart, people, uh, men, have a life expectancy difference of 15 years. That's an obscenity, an absolute obscenity. And the uh, United Kingdom chose war and Scotland chose peace. The last time there were massive demonstrations and uh, it chooses privilege. Um, and I don't think Scotland would choose privilege. So at a meeting this morning with NHS officials about briefing MSPs on, on issues in NHS Highland and uh, they said something that was very dear to my heart. My mother was a hospital cleaner and took her job very, very seriously. Um, at one point it was contracted out, and the people who were doing that then went off to clean an office block and an abattoir and everything else, a garage. Um, NHS cleaners are key to the whole process. They actually have a, a, a system now where they're taught how to clean the toilets. And it sounds very disrespectful, but um, that's key. That's where the generals are starting to see the but who's the important person in the NHS? It's likely to be the consultants, not the cleaners. I, I think there is a, a, a different approach in Scotland, hopefully. Um, the Constitution. Um, there's hope. There's hope with a new Constitution. I think we aspire. There's nothing wrong with aspirational politics. What's wrong with the world is a dearth of aspiration, in my humble opinion. Um, and the Constitution gives us the opportunity to talk about the head of state, the monarchy. Now, I have to say, and uh, I hope to note I've not been critical of the party I've left, I have to say I was dismayed hearing the Deputy First Minister last week um, and others trying to uh, explain that this wasn't completely off the wall to not have freedom of information applied to the monarchy. But utter nonsense. Mm -hmm. Utter nonsense. And I have to tell you that um, in my 
fellow rebel, and I do find that term amusing. I was a rebel for adhering to party policy. I do find that amusing. But um, it will not be supporting the government in this with freedom of information if they uh, don't uh, change it. There's opportunity with, yeah. Yeah, opportunities here also to come with a written constitution to do what Mexico does, and that's to outlaw acts of aggression. We need to look at human rights and asylum. I think the record of the United Kingdom with regard to both of these, and I just saw on Twitter within the last couple of hours that Mr. Bla uh, Mr. Um, I said Blair, the same difference, Mr. Cameron, um, wants to end the quote nonsense of equality impact assessments. Well, that for me says it all. Politics is about priorities. It's about the private sector benefiting in England and Wales, or us having free personal care and free prescriptions. Free prescriptions, and we're constantly lobbied as parliamentarians. The Parkinson's uh, in Scotland, uh, they, had ten, they have 10,000 sufferers. 70% of these, over 60, were paying um, for their uh, long-term condition. I want to see things like uh, a real debate about the railways. Uh, the Railways Act of 1993 precludes the government from running the railways, despite the massive public uh, subsidy that goes in there. Uh, and I, I think there's an opportunity to discuss that in a way forward. Uh, corporation tax. Uh, yeah, I don't know how I would have responded were I, I, I still in the party, probably uh, discussed it behind the scenes. The idea of giving Amazon to treat their workers like very poorly. Um, and who have aid tax and who have a disregard for the health and safety helped along the way by the UK government doesn't appeal to me. Privatisation of care is, is an obscenity. Uh, I was involved as a counsellor in issues around that and the idea that someone will sit down and work out that they're going to give an older person 12 minutes and 3 minutes to, 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 to see to their personal needs. Um, I could, I, I know we're going to have questions, I could go on, I, I, I won't. I'm just going to conclude with a few comments. Scotland's not perfect, it's far from perfect, but there's an opportunity coming uh, with the independence referendum for a broad coalition to work and bring about some radical change. And I think radical change is what we need. Um, the SNP have never said they have a monopoly on the, uh, the independence debate. Um, and the unionist play, um, press want to play that particular part. I don't think you, the Green Party, uh, and others should allow that to be the case. Um, I think we can set an example for the rest of the UK. Um, I, I've, I spoke recently to a, a, a trade union executive and at the conclusion of two questions, the first person says, I agree with everything you say, but why does he need independence? Well, the reality is, you know, I sympathise with the workers in, in Newcastle, in Warwick, in Cardiff, Belfast, wherever. We have an opportunity to do something and lead the way here. It should be a broad co uh, coalition. Um, and I, I mean, I'm sure the left will assert itself and bring about a socially just independence world. Thank you.